What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the Varsity Overland channel and today we are talking about the top three things that I hate about 270 awnings. Well, maybe maybe hate is a very strong word, but I'm going to go with the top three things that I, I dislike um, or that I have a problem with about 270 awnings. So if you are interested in getting yourself a 270 awning, specifically a freestanding 270 awning, uh, you might learn something from this video and, and perhaps you might be swayed one way or the other. The awning that I have on the truck is the Overland Vehicle Systems awning, 270 awning, um, the LT awning. And although this is the awning that I'm going to use for my demonstration purposes of this video, uh, it's by no means, you know, a way for me to talk trash about Overland Vehicle Systems. The product itself does the job, but there are definitely things that I've noticed about it that could be improved. Uh, and I've had people reach out to me over the past few months um, and give me their experiences with their 270 awning from other brands or other companies. So a lot of the stuff that I'm gonna talk about in this video is not just unique to Overland Vehicle Systems. It is kind of across the board with many 270 awnings. And like I said, especially freestanding 270 awnings. Now, everything I'm gonna mention in this video actually comes after only two and a half months of ownership. It might be a little bit more than that. Maybe we'll call it three months. Three months of ownership of this 270 awning from OVS. And in that time frame, I have also posted a video about my installation and my initial thoughts. And that's kind of what got the ball rolling with this whole idea about the things that I don't like about 270 awnings. Because I've had quite a few people reach out to me since I posted that installation video um, about their experiences with their own awnings and my experience over the past three months with this awning. Now you might be thinking, okay, Varsity Overland, three months is like nothing. That's like zero time. So what could you possibly have to say about an awning or any product after only three months of use? Well, that's kind of the problem because I actually do have some observations about this over the past three months. And in the three months, we did mount this to the vehicle and then take the vehicle on a cross-country trip from Connecticut to Colorado. So we're gonna go with three things. And if you want kind of the biggest indicator, the biggest piece of information that might sway you one way or the other, you might want to wait till the end of the video where I go over the third, I'm saving the best for last, okay? So right off the bat, number one, first thing is going to be uh, the way the item is stored. So as you can see right off the bat, the awning is stored inside of this long kind of zippered bag, pretty much like 99% of uh, camping awnings or overland awnings are, okay? The only difference would be if you happen to have one of those brand new hard shell awnings. Um, I can think of iCamper as being one of the companies that has a new hard shell casing on their 270 awning. All right, but every other awning or most other awnings that you find out there are going to be inside of this kind of textured, rubberized canvas sort of bag, okay? So there's a couple things to think about here, all right? And number one, if it's inside of a bag like this, you may run into some issues as far as storage. Now I'll admit, this awning from OVS, I have never had a problem with storage. I've been able to roll it up, get it inside, Velcro it down, and zipper it, and it's never been a problem, okay? But what I have seen a couple people comment on with their own awnings from different brands is sometimes the zipper can get stuck or get snagged on the fabric along the side, which can cause some problems. Sometimes the zippers over time will just fail and then you can't necessarily close it at all unless you, you know, contact the company and you get a replacement or you kind of jerry-rig something up yourself, all right? Now that hasn't been an issue for me, but what I did notice right off the bat when I received this awning was a little bit of fraying with the stitching. And there's some here, which doesn't seem like a big deal. You know what I mean? Like something I quickly overlooked. I noticed it, but I quickly overlooked it when I unboxed this and installed it on the truck. 
because it's not, I mean, what are you gonna do, right? A little bit of fraying with some of the stitching is not gonna be a huge problem. Before this awning, I actually owned a regular, just four foot awning, and it was from the company Rome Adventure Co. And I did an installation and review as well, if you wanna uh, go watch that video, but that was made of the same kind of material, the same kind of canvas bag. And over the year that I owned that awning, uh, there was a little hole that started to develop on one of these corners. I can't remember where, but there was a hole that developed in one of the corners just from, I guess, maybe the bending of the material over time. You know, it just gets weak and it can get punctured or whatever. So that's, that's one drawback of having it inside of a canvas bag like this. Um, but the benefit to that is that it's lighter. Okay, so if you go for a hard shell 270 awning, then the whole thing would be encased in some sort of, you know, durable material. Maybe it's a hardened plastic, maybe it's even aluminum, you know, some sort of hard shell casing, but that would make it heavier, right? So you have to ask yourself, do you want to sacrifice, you know, durability for weight or vice versa? So at this point, you might be saying to yourself, well, I don't really know if I want to make any sacrifices. Can't I... Can I just get a lightweight awning that is also durable? Because it doesn't really sound like there's there's a 100% good either way. There's always gotta be you know some sort of give. And uh, that's, that's probably true for the most part, but what I might recommend is if you don't want a super durable hard shell awning that's heavy, and uh, you don't want the canvas bag, which makes it lighter, then maybe you go with something, something that's like a, uh, a more portable awning, right? Like something like the Moonshade, for example. Uh, it's really lightweight. You could pack it up yourself. It does not attach to your vehicle permanently, which could be another benefit to it. Um, and you can store it inside, right? If you have a truck, you can put it in the truck bed. You can put it in the cab. You can, you, you could literally put it anywhere you want because of the way it stores is so small. Um, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, just Google Moonshade and you could probably find other, other shades or other awnings that are like that. They're portable, right? So you can just take them off one vehicle, put them on another, you put it in your backyard if you wanted to. That doesn't need to be attached to your vehicle, so you don't necessarily have to worry about the durability of the packaging. It's not gonna be slapped with branches. It's not gonna be sitting out in the, in the elements every single day. All right, so that might be an option for you. But other than the, uh, the storage, next we're gonna go into the position of the awning. Once it is deployed, because there are two things about the, the position that I, I'm not a huge fan of. And if you see my previous video about the installation, you already know what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna try to go through this quickly and then we can move on to the third and final. And if you ask me the most important uh, thing that I am not a huge fan of when it comes to these awnings. All right, so we have the awning completely deployed. And at first glance, it looks great, okay? And remember, I'm not trying to make this out to be the worst product on the planet. It definitely does the job. And I used it pretty much every day on our trip. But something that I mentioned in my installation video is, you could probably notice it already right here, the gap that exists between the back of the truck and the awning itself. Local overlanders that I like to talk to, and then other people who have sent me some messages on YouTube from my previous video, they've told me like, yeah, you know, I have a, whatever, fill in the blank, 270 awning, and it does that too, right? So this is kind of an issue across the board with a lot of these 270 awnings. And and trust me, I, I've played with the, the direction of it, I've played with the location of it. It's not because of where the awning is mounted, right? Right now, you might notice that it's pretty much gently making contact with the back of my tent. Um, when the tent's open, I can pull it a little bit more, but that's not what's causing the problem right now. I, I promise you that it is the hinge in the back and this piece of metal right here that literally makes contact with the, uh, the limb, the awning limb. So a, a more honest uh, description of the awning and, and a lot of 270 awnings might be uh, it's a two, 60 awning, you know, or a 250 or 55, you know, whatever. It just, it's not all the way, okay? In fact, some companies will even make an accessory 
called a gutter, an awning gutter, that you can slide into a channel right here. And it almost looks like this one has a C channel. So I'm surprised that OVS doesn't make an awning gutter. But a lot of companies will make an awning gutter that you can fish in here and then it connects from the back of your awning to either the back of your, your vehicle or your tent or whatever it is and it, it collects any rain. Because honestly, yeah, these awnings are great for shade. But one of the main reasons I got it is because of rain, you know, precipitation, maybe some light snow, you know. So if I'm making, you know, my dinner at camp on the tailgate right here and I have water trickling down from between the awning and the, and the tent, that, that kind of makes the entire situation pointless because the back of your vehicle is where you do so much work. So now we're finally moving on to the third thing that I hate about uh, the 270 awning. You can actually see that I started to disassemble the awning, kind of break it down behind me. And uh, that's because in order to show you um, the final item, I have to be able to see the canvas top of the of the awning. So what you'll notice is some rubbing that is actually occurring within the awning. And this is going to be really hard for me to do if I don't flip around the camera. So let me flip around the camera and I'm going to give you a better view. But what's happening is the awning limbs, as they get folded into the canvas bag and, the, and they get compressed together, um, the rubbing, the rubbing against each other back and forth, um, either through off-roading or just through basic, you know, road travel, which believe it or not was 90% of the uh movement that this this item and the truck experienced over the last three months i mean think about it if your if your overland vehicle is also your daily driver 90 percent of everything it experiences is going to be on paved road it's just the way it works so that being said you could almost consider over the past three months this damage has happened under ideal conditions almost so let me flip the camera around and you could take a look for yourself so this is what we're dealing with here and if i can get focused that'd be great but this is some wear and tear that is happening on the top of the material on this limb and then along with it is the point where it meets inside the bag. So once all this is compressed, right, this is all secured in on itself. That is literally where it is. That's where it sits when it's packaged away. So you can see that the two limbs against each other are probably bobbing a little bit during transportation and it's causing some wear and tear. Okay, now this is the part where I'd love to hear from you guys. I would love for you to tell me whether your awning does this or has shown this at all because I've heard of a few people that have OVS awnings that have experienced this uh, and a few other brands. I think other than that, I haven't heard much about it. And I did talk to OVS about this situation and uh, whether or not that they've seen this happening. They said no, they denied it. They said this is the first thing that, the first time they've ever heard of this. Now I could understand that this was happening after a year, maybe a year of use or six months of use on like heavy off-roading situations. But like I just said, I've only had this for maybe three months. I'm stretching that time, that time frame, maybe three months um, where 90% of the driving has been on road and this happened okay to pay for a brand new awning install it and three months later already have the material breaking down it's kind of disappointing some of you might watch this and be like who cares as long as it still gives shade as long as it still you know gets some of the water from rain off of you then who cares and i get it but when i buy a product I'm really hoping that it's going to last a while. I don't want to have to flip flop items every few months on my vehicle. I want to buy an awning and have it last a while. I want to buy a tent and have it last a while. You know what I mean? I'm not going to, I'm not going to switch everything because it breaks down after a short period of time. So you might want to consider that too. And one thing that has been commonly reoccurring is 
the materials used in some of the more expensive awnings are the ones that I hear the most positivity about. So basically, uh, you get what you pay for, is what I'm trying to say here. So there you have it, people. Those are the three things that I uh, that I strongly dislike about the 270 awnings and, and many 270 awnings that we see out there on, on the market for, you know, overlanding. You know, if you don't really think it's a big deal to get yourself a freestanding awning and you think that you can just open up your awning and deploy the legs as you go, which let's be honest, might not really be that inconvenient, as inconvenient as we, as we think it is, then maybe just do that. That's going to be cheaper for you. It's going to be lighter, right? Because the, the limbs that come out aren't going to be so, so beefy and strong and heavy, but also you might end up in a situation where the limbs, when they're compressed inside of the packaging, they don't rub together. Um, I've been looking into an awning called the Fox wing, which is kind of a collaboration between Oz tent and Rhino rack. And I can't say whether this is the only awning that does this mechanism. There might be others, but the Fox wing by Oz tent up here in the corner where all the limbs come together, this awning, the, the Fox, the Fox wing actually takes all the limbs and puts them into their own designated spacers. So you bring the whole thing together, and then once you do, each limb has its own designated little slot that it fits into, and that keeps it from making contact with basically with itself. Uh, all of the limbs just kind of like get their own designated row. I've been thinking about that awning. I'm not saying I'm going to get that awning, because it would be nice if I could make this OVS LT awning last. So with that in mind, I reached out to Overland Vehicle Systems. They were like, oh, really? That's what happened? Here, let us send you a replacement, okay? They're not sending the entire awning, right? That, that'd be a lot, but they're sending the canvas at least. I'm gonna have to take this canvas off and kind of like put the new one on, uh, whatever, you know, not really a huge deal. But my worry is, will it just happen again? So I would love to hear from you guys. If you have an awning, it does not need to be an Overland Vehicle Systems awning. Like I said, a lot of things I just covered are common problems amongst many brands, many awnings, okay? There it is. Three things that I do not like about 270 awnings. I'm probably still going to keep this awning on the truck for a while. I'm, I'm hoping to make it work. Um, but hopefully you learned something in the video. And if you have any comments, definitely let me know. Thanks for sticking around. I appreciate you watching. And as always, peace, people.